Kid, seriously. Welcome to another episode of the Spider-Man in Review podcast. Oh wait, that's a di- that's a different show. Welcome to the Kid Seriously Show, the only podcast around convinced we are not currently under investigation. Every now and again, we get to get together to discuss the world, play our world famous trivia question game show. We're going to discuss other things from Nerdland that might tickle our fancy, and once in a while, review a trailer, movie, or what have you. To my left, it's the guy who really could have played soccer at Harry Hamlin University. It's Luke Neitzel. And to my right, way to my right, it's the guy who once told me that the drummer from The Who is the best in history because he could drum real fast. It's Mark Neitzel. I am Maya Madrid, and this is the Kids Seriously Podcast. And gentlemen, how are you? Technically, it was St. Thomas, not, well, not Harry Hamlin. It's much better for Harry Hamlin but, University. But uh, I was told, because I, I worked with a coach at, at Harry Hamlin University, that anyone could walk onto that team and make it. So, <clears throat> Not just anybody. But you could too. I, I could have if I would have wanted to go there. So no, I'm I'm fine. It's the holidays. I don't have to do much at work. Uh, you know, it was a good football weekend for me. Bad hockey weekend for me. But you know, of, of all things, sports. The continuing of Jose Mourinho as the coach of Manchester United is one of the things that brings me the most pleasure right now. Liverpool won that game today. Oh yeah, three to one. Oh. And it, man, not not only is Manchester United bad. <coughs> But they play the boringest brand of soccer to watch. Like, I just, I live to watch their games at home just so they show crowd shots of all their pissed off fans. It is hilarious. <laughs> As a Madrid fan, I can empathize because if you take Cristiano Ronaldo out of that lineup, it was basically 10 guys behind the ball and Cristiano on the fast break. So I can only imagine what it's like well, when you don't have him. But ima- imagine that you have, you know, not, not quite an equivalent player, but you have Paul Pogba or whatever on Manchester United. Imagine, uh, Real Madrid having access to Cristiano Ronaldo, but just not playing him out of spite. <laughs> wow. Mark, how are you? Oh, so last night was my wife's uh, work Christmas party, and then the work Christmas party after party. So I am currently in day one of the five-day recovery period that my body now needs whenever I have more than two drinks past 8 o'clock p.m. So there's that. I've spent all day dressing envelopes for Christmas cards and baking Christmas cookies and trying not to pass out in the batter. And, yeah, I'm just ready for the holidays to be over already and we've still got like a week to go which is fun because i'm actually drinking while we're doing this and we'll probably be drunk by the end of it so it works out well oh i can i can smell the alcohol over the the google hangout and it's making me ill nice nice Maya, maya yourself uh i've been working a lot it seems like whenever you're working a little i have to work a lot uh, about 70 hours a week and playing a lot of Madden. So I can tell you all about the rebuilding of the Buffalo Bills under the guidance of Thurman Thomas. But I won't tell you. Wait, it's Thur- did you resurrect Thurman Thomas no, from I'm, the dead well, to play or dead. is he your he's general allowed. manager? My, I made him my general manager and nice. brought a Super Bowl back to the Bills. Unfortunately, I then bankrupted them. Oh, <laughs> no. In trouble. Yeah, the NFL took the franchise back. So. Oh, are they going to sell him to Bon Jovi and move him to Toronto? That'd be vicious. That'd be pretty cool. That would. But second best jerseys right now Toronto. in football. Yeah, Bills. <laughs> oh, yes, the Toronto getting, Bills. They're getting real deep dive on the Argonauts. And, no, okay. no. Can't. Uh, the C- Canadian football lost me with a goalpost in the front of the end zone. <laughs> so. Was it wasn't the extra guy or not, less down? It not was the, the extra guy. No, you know, actually, the, one of my favorite, I had a boss who was a Canadian football player, and he played, he grew up in Canada, he grew up in Ottawa, and then he went to North Dakota State. And he went to his first practice, and he was on special teams, and they do a kickoff, and he's real excited because he's on the uh, he's he's going down to tackle the guy, and he goes down and just obliterates the guy who who <laughs> caught the punt, <laughs> and and and, and oh, he's God. he's uh, he's all proud of himself, and everyone's just screaming at him, and they're like, McBride, why didn't you see the fair catch signal? And he just looked around and went, "What's a fair catch?" <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note. Um... We're going to get right to Lord, but not Miller's favorite game show. It's Am I Right or Am I Wrong? In true American style, our contestants will offer up earnest opinions, which will either be taken as fact or immediately mocked by our moderator. 
Here's how the two-player version of our game works. Seven questions I'm going to administer tonight as Mark and our champion Luke go against each other. The winner is the one who gets the four. The order comes in serpentine variety. There are no ties. You must win it in regulation. Luke, you are the champion. You will go first. Are you ready? I'm ready. Mark, you are the number one contender. You will go second. Out of two. Are you ready? <laughs> Out of three. Um, yeah, I know. yeah, I'm here. All right. Guys, it's Oscar season, I guess. That's what I'm told. Make me care about a movie that's going to be nominated for an Oscar. Go. Oh, I can easily make you care about a movie that's going to be nominated for an Oscar. I can make you care about it so much because it's your favorite movie of the year and it's going to be up for some special effects awards, which is Solo, A Star Wars Story, which in no way was boring to anyone who saw it. It was a pure... <laughs> Fun joy ride. We all loved it. It was amazing. I hope there's a sequel, but no Darth Maul because that part was annoying. Um, but it's really good, and hopefully we find out about getting his vest because that was the one thing that was lacking. Is we never we never got the Aaron's Engine story of his vest, but that will be nominated for uh, some special effects awards. I'm sure. Luke goes with the safe choice. Mark, how are you going to beat him? Question. Uh, well, I'm also sticking with the special effects category, and I'm going with the movie that is going to resurrect the DC universe and put it on the cinematic um, even parallel with the Marvel universe. Uh, this movie is going to reintroduce the fun and the magic that is superheroes back into uh, what has been quite honestly, a, a rather dour sort of lackluster universe. Uh, and on top of that, it, it features an amazing man who is just breathtaking in his shirtlessness. So, um, I want you to get really excited because we're going to be hearing a lot come off with, um, Oscar season time about Aquaman. I just had a left-handed layup, and the defense didn't even bother to walk on the court. They didn't. He was really getting pissed off, but you're both fucking wrong, because the answer is a movie that I liked more than Solo. It's Black Panther, you dumb bastards, okay? If you've been listening to the show, you guys know how much I love that movie and love that character. Unfortunately, because Mark just gave up and went with something he knew I hated, I'm going to give Luke the point, and we move on to question two, you dumb Wait, bastards. We know you like Black Panther. Why do we need you to get excited for that? I I personally just want to tell you guys how excited I am to report back to you next weekend on Aquaman because I have oh God. 9 a.m. tickets on Saturday morning to go see it. So Fruity Pebbles Massacre. <laughs> NFL season is winding down to a close. Who you guys got to win the Super Bowl? Mark, you go first. Hmm. Well, um, as, as much as I hate both teams, I'm going to go with the uh, Saints- Pat's final, and I, I'm i going to – I don't want to say it, but I, I'm going to go with the Pats because I think that they're just too good, and the, the magic may be running out, and this team isn't going to be around much longer with Belichick and, and Brady, so this is going to be their last hurrah. I, I want to say Bears for a couple reasons um, because <laughs> – because I, I obviously know how that would irritate some people here. And on a first, I need the point. I, I, uh, no, no, I'm not going to say Bears. I actually hate the Vikings a lot more than the Bears. No, I, so I, I'm aware. I wouldn't but, even be irritated. I'm cheering for the Bears versus the Vikings. But really, part, part of it is that my son likes the Bears. Oh. So that would be really cool for him. But I, I'm going to go with a different answer than Mark on both of those, which is a little bit of uh, an answer from my heart because it's kind of my... Traditional. Is it the Jets? It's not the Jets. the Jets. It's not the Jets, oh. unfortunately. Stunning comeback. The best jersey. In the NFL. The Raiders. The, the, the Raiders the are eliminated. Jets. No, the, but anyway. The Raiders are eliminated. We're going to go with, no, I'm saying the Jets have the best jersey. Yeah, and you're wrong. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm that's gonna go, this game, and you're wrong. I'm going to go with the team that's playing right now. I'm going to go with the the Los Angeles oh, God Rams. God damn you. Who Ooh, I, that's disgusting. Who I, I think are are just who I want to win because they're, they're fun. Uh, they got sweet helmets. I like Gurley. I like Goff. I like young coaches coming in and taking over and making a run. I think this was a team that everyone thought was going to make a big run last year and really fell out quickly. So I think they've learned from that, and this is going to be their year. And, you know, it was nice to see that they actually had fans in the stadium tonight to see their game. So Rams actually have quite a, quite a good Rams have sentence. been doing yeah. yeah better than the Chargers, yeah, which is Chargers. weird because the Chargers, too, are, what are they like? They're like... 11 and 3 or something yeah. and they still can't sell out a 20 seat soccer stadium. Like I keep telling you they're not an LA team. Yeah. So no, I'm I'm going to go I'm going to go with the Rams. It's, it's who I'm cheering for assuming I mean 
the Vikings will probably make the playoffs, but I really don't think they're going to make much of a run. I just, you know, I think they'll be right back in it next year. So once they get knocked out in Chicago in the first week of the playoffs, I'll be cheering for the the Rams. Both good answers. In fact, I thought both um, of those answers long and true um, gave them both good consideration. But Mark actually hit my Super Bowl picks on the head, the Saints and the Patriots, and also picked my Super Bowl winner. So by rule, the point goes to Mark. Question number three. This is to Luke first. Things seem to be getting worse for and worse for the president, Donald Trump, as the Mueller investigation keeps getting conviction after conviction. Predict the future. What is the end game here? See what I did there? The end, end game? The yeah. End game. That's, like Thanos. Yeah, we did. We so did it's like nuclear weapons. We did that, we did that last week. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, Sadly for me, I think the end game is that a bunch of stuff will come out and Republicans in Congress will make sure that, and or in the Senate will make sure that nothing really happens with it. No matter how bad the news is, because we're at a time in the world where party is significantly more important than country or your actual belief system. So they'll abandon everything they pretend to stand for because it's better than letting Democrats be right or have control of everything. So I think they'll be... Own the country to own the libs. Yeah, exactly. So I think there'll be a lot of, you know, like everything will come out and it'll be published and they'll just kind of refuse to act and we'll just have to wait for uh, the, the voters to hopefully, which I think they will, take take a better course in two years. Mark, what you got? Uh... What I actually think is I think we're going to wait until the the Democrats uh, take over power of the House in the new year. They're going to immediately move for major investigations, at which point the uh, Republican senators who no longer will have a chance to really hide behind anything are going to make a move against him short of actual moving from office, at which point he's going to go public and declare that it's an attempt on his presidency, basically an illegal coup, um, at which point I think that will force everybody's hand. Um, he will wind up resigning um, as part of a deal with Pence giving him, I mean, don't shake your head at me. This is what's going to happen. Bible truth, write it down. He'll never resign. He's too big uh, headed. Him and then, We'll get the rest of the Mueller report later. I give this all about six months. And then, and then, Pence will have our daughters in their red outfits and white hoods in no time. Mark, you had me until you said that he'd resign because I never believe that he will resign. I think, uh, I think he's going to get a lot of challengers in 2020. I think it's going to be brutal, and I think he he survives that and loses. I'd agree with Luke that I don't think much happens, uh, but I think the ramifications of the Mueller investigation are going to. And his, uh, his chance in 2020. Um, I give it to, to Luke, though, based on technicality, because I do not think he will ever resign. We go to question number four. Uh, Google searches suggest that CBR just ranks Star Wars vehicles. Luke and Mark, we used to do a Star Wars show that was a lot like this show. Tell me, aside from the Millennium Falcon, what is the best Star Wars vehicle? We go to Mark first on this one. Oh, no question. It's a Star Destroyer. Hell, on the name alone, that strikes terror in your hearts. But can you imagine, just, you think of just a fleet of those things bearing down on the rebel ships. It's just terrifying. They're like giant sharks swimming through the ocean of space, just annihilating everything in their presence. Um, They're a brilliant design. They're iconic. They're instantly recognizable. It's almost as as recognizable as an x-wing or uh the millennium falcon and they're just badass the conundrums the conundrums of someone who knows the answer that will for sure get them the points do you really i think so okay i have a so so now i'm curious so i'm going to just go with that or whatever my actual favorite ship is even above the millennium falcon is the x-wing right. i just think that's that's badass oh i didn't put what i i know what you're gonna say yeah you didn't put that you didn't put that no. okay so because obviously i know that your favorite which you probably forgot is the naboo starfighter which is also amazing right. um and it, and i think i think the naboo starfighter is good just from the standpoint that i think it's a good representation of what that culture would do like it's kind of gaudy and colorful and kind of a like ceremonial like we don't really fight but we made a weapon like look at us type type vehicle but it does look really sweet so that that's really cool i'm always more of a fan of the little the dogfighter and i think you know the the first time 
in a new hope when you know they you know lock s foils and attack positions and those wings actually split and then they're buzzing around or whatever i've i've always been an x-wing guy and i'll actually say my favorite x-wing is the force awakens poe dameron black x-wing um just because I, what a sweet redesign that is on something that really looked good. But I'm, I'm an X-wing guy for sure. Well, you're both wrong. Um, the only answer that is acceptable is uh, the one ship. And, and Mark, I thought you did a great job uh, with your, your ode to Star Destroyers. But you'll remember in Return of the Jedi there was just one ship that was able to take down a, not just a Star Destroyer. But the largest Star Destroyer in Star Wars history to that point. An A-Wing? An A-Wing is what I got. For the win, no one gets a point. A-Wing. Oh, man. Yeah, okay, but But if we're talking about taking down Star Destroyers, then it should have been a Hammerhead Corvette. Because that was the most badass takedown of a Star Destroyer that we've ever seen. That was pretty good. No, I mean, you know I love speed, and that's the fastest ship in the Star Wars universe. Second fastest. You could have just thrown a rock into the... That Star Destroyer and crashed it that way. That has nothing to then do with a, Then apparently you're, Star Destroyers you're, are not that great. Your criteria for it is it crashes good. Well, no, no, my criteria is that it's Who took the fastest. shields down on that, though? Didn't an X-Wing take the shields <laughs> down on that, which is what allowed the destroyed A-Wing to blow it up? No, actually, I think an A-Wing did. But I, oh, I, I thought, thought Wedge took it. I thought Wedge took the shield down. Yeah. And then that's why the A-Wing works, is because they had no shield, so it destroyed the bridge. But really, I like it because it's the fastest ship. The second fastest. How many? It. How many seconds can it do? Or parsecs can it do the Kessel Run? In? I don't know. It's pretty. Well, I'm talking <laughs> sublight speed try only. Why to crash in? He talking, got talking shot. Talking and was speed. Out of control. Oh, that's that's a nonsense answer. All right, get over I'm it. Uh, question question five. This one goes to Luke first. Last week, you each struggled to get by without me. Luke called the post credit scene in Avengers Endgame would feature the X Men. For the point, give me one casting decision that is an absolute must from the new version of the X-Men, but to make this difficult, I am only interested in the first two iterations of the team and not villains. So you get your choice from Xavier, Scott, Jean, Iceman, Beast, Angel, Wolverine, Colossus, Storm, Nightcrawler, Sunfire, and if you're feeling sassy, Thunderbird. Uh, well, Th- Thunderbird's a tough one because there's like two yes. actual native actors that they give roles to and Adam Beach is probably still doing Law & Order episodes. So we, we can't pull him away from that. So can I'm sorry, can you give me the the list again? Because you didn't do the it's complete the, second generation team. Oh I must I did I did I not? Who oh well, I, I didn't hear a banshee in there. Oh yeah. So yeah, I, can, you can include can banshee. You, can you just run through it again? Yeah, so, well he's obviously not who you put on the list. <laughs> <coughs> well, I forgot him. That was an honest mistake. So you got Xavier, Scott, Gene, Iceman, Beast, Angel. That's the first team. Yeah, the first yeah, first team's true. Wolverine, Colossus, Storm, Nightcrawler, Sunfire, Thunderbird, or Banshee. And that's my mistake. Okay. Oh, well, I'm not going to bother with Sunfire because he quit after like four episodes. Um, anyway, uh, I, I imagine knowing you, you probably have a really good Cyclops that you've been fantasizing about uh, for a while. <laughs> only, only so late at night. I'm not I'm not sure if we're allowed to do this because we're crossing we're crossing realms, though. Uh, Jaiman Huntsu has been in both DC and Marvel, so I guess this is allowed. I'm going to I'm going to go with uh, the now-retired, maybe, Superman, Henry Cavill, and I'm going to cast him as Colossus. We can hopefully do a Russian accent, but I, I bet he can. Just don't but say I... anything, Henry. Exactly. I think, I, think he would, I think he would be a great Colossus, and I think if DC really is done with him, then I think they blew it, and uh, so Marvel should snatch him up. He could do that whole, like, good boy, like, you know, he's the good guy. He's, that's... He's, yeah, he'd be great at that. Mark, that's a strong uh, answer. You got, you're up to the battle, buddy. Does it have to be an X-Men or can it be a villain? No, I said not villains, but I'd be interested to hear your villain anyway. Okay. Well, if it was villain, my pick would be Clive Owens as Magneto. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Um, but since that is ineligible, I am going to go with Chris Pine as Angel. Uh, not only because I think he's somebody that they want to get, would want to get into the Marvel universe. Um, part of Angel's thing, aside from having wings and, you know, occasionally a bazooka, is that he is supposed to be the prettiest uh, person pretty much in the entire Marvel universe. And tell me that you're going to find a prettier actor than Chris Pine to play him. So well, he's already playing yeah. Thor, so <laughs> he's out anyway. <laughs> 
Wow. Um, I haven't done this in a long time, but I'm just going to be honest. Those are both absolutely amazing answers. I have bored you both a point because those are both inspired. I had Mark Strong as Xavier, which I didn't really like. I looked, oh. I thought a lot about this. It didn't, I didn't really, I, I, I actually really like the cast that they have for the X-Men now. And so I'm a little, the only part that really saddens me is that they're going to get rid of that cast. Um, so, but do you, I, okay. So like the kids are fine yeah. to me from apocalypse, but not anything special. Like I think if you replace them all, I'd be completely fine with it. And, Nicholas Holt's Beast is good. Yeah. I think what they're really only... I think the only really sad things is that McAvoy and Fassbender are perfect. Yeah. But I'm not even sad about Fassbender because I just want them to stop using Magneto. Like, they just need to move away from from Magneto. Yeah. Like, I'm disappointed he's in Dark Phoenix because it's... You, you, he feels kind of tacked on or yeah. whatever. So for me, I think the only big loss when they move this over is losing McAvoy. Yeah. And that's really what I mean. I mean, he's my favorite ca- character in the new in the new season, so, or in the new uh, well, movies. I, and I would even say that Fassbender in First Class is my favorite hmm. of anything they've done. But th- I feel like that character has just run its course that's, with what that's they're doing. The, that's probably the best moment. I mean, the 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 scene in Argentina in the oh, car yeah. is the greatest yeah. X Men scene I think ever, including Logan. Anything from Logan, I think that's perfect. Uh, so you both get the point. I've lost track. I'm up by one. You're up by one with two to play. Yep. Because we didn't get a point on one. That's right. So, Mark, this goes to you. Report, reports out of our offices from the UK. <laughs> the kid seriously offices. That's right. <laughs> our, our, uh, In UK. <laughs> our, our UK branch. That's I'm emailing is, you right now. That's right. what that noise was. It was just right. off. And according to Luke's email, there is a Santa Claus that has been fired for swearing at children. Tell me what the best Christmas tradition of the two atheists that I'm spending my time with would be the best Christmas tradition. What, what tradition do you do? The, does it one that we still do, or is it one that we we may no longer do? Because well, whatever, open to interpretation, man. You can you can go with. Okay, that. so this also ties into um, what was discussed earlier. For those of us who follow us on Twitter, <laughs> this ties into the best Christmas gift. That Luke and I ever got, which was that <laughs> six foot long GI Joe aircraft carrier. You know the the one that everybody lusted over and, and complained that they didn't get. We actually owned that, and it was set up um, on a door that was laid down in our basement. And so we would play with that all the time, uh, all the time. Um, despite the, the most fact used toy we <laughs> ever had. I mean. <clears throat> Despite the fact that our basement was uncarpeted, so we had to sit on the cold floor because our parents couldn't, you know, afford apparently to put a rug down there. Yeah, you. Anyway, I've been to your fucking house. You weren't hurting. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Anyway, so of course I would say the greatest tradition would be the same tradition we had whenever we played with the aircraft carrier, which was always that every single adventure ended with Cobra storming the aircraft carrier, taking over everything except the control room, the Joes aiming the missiles at the deck to sink it, and then surviving on a life raft afterwards. So that, I I think, for me, screams Christmas tradition more than anything else. And it was a tradition that we could do, you know, throughout the year, not just once on December 25th. But every single day. Uh, You know... My mine isn't funny or whatever, but we uh, we moved to Milwaukee and we didn't know a lot of people here, and uh, we ended up making most of our friends ended up being transplants, other transplants to Milwaukee. Shocking! I'd never, I'd never thought that. Huh? You'd never think that, given how much you hate Wisconsin, that you would search out people not from Wisconsin. We didn't, we didn't search out. It's just you know. That's kind of what it sounds like, buddy. It's kind of what it sounds like. No, I think it's, uh, I think it's of of anywhere that well, a our neighbors were trans all transplants, so it was our neighbors too. But I think, too, you know, you move into a, a city where people have been living for 20 years, like, they have their group of friends, and they're, like, embedded with their group of friends, where transplants are people looking for friends. But what we started doing on Christmas Eve is just having a dinner at our house, and it was kind of anyone who could didn't have a place to go, couldn't make it home to wherever they were visiting, could come for whatever length of time they wanted to come. So... Not only was it, you know, it was fun and we got to meet with a lot of people. Like we got, you know, like our friends that are were German, that were our neighbors that would come over. They made their traditional Christmas 
soup that they would make. And we still make that every year, even though they live in Germany now again. So just, just kind of having that open door, everyone can come in and, and have a good time and relax and be with friends, you know, even if they can't be with their, their family is kind of the one I like the most. Well, uh, that was real boring, Luke, but uh, it is good, boring. good news for you is you still get the point because Mark uh, touched upon, aside from my parents' divorce and my dad, when my dad got custody of me, watching my brother and my sister scream as they ran down the street, asking to come back so that they could go too. The third worst part about my childhood was not getting the USS Flag yeah. aircraft carrier that I wanted so fucking bad. And to have the audacity to say that your basement was not ritzy enough. <laughs> it was a so carpeted, it didn't have carpeted. Yeah. You can go fuck yourself. <laughs> the point goes to Luke. You well, are the champion. We go to the seven. The 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 cleanup question. This one goes to Luke first, then then to Mark. Sometimes when you're working about 50, 60, 70 hours a week and your buddy Luke is sitting at home doing nothing. That's not true. Oh, I'm sometimes, sorry, be, making yourself available to Sometimes, because I didn't even bring up the best part of my whole weekend. Okay. Sometimes you're you're rewatching the first season of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina because you know the Christmas special is premiering on Friday. So you want to be fresh. Yeah. Be fresh so you you got to make sure you know everything from the last two weeks when you watch it. So maybe in this time of season, your kid is acting up because it's close to Christmas and you spend your entire weekend devoted to the shit you don't care, care about. It's enough to make you go crazy. And whenever I'm in that sort of mood, the Madrid enjoys listening to a little gangster rap to give it back to the world with double guns blazing. Tell me, who was the best rapper of the 1990s or early 2000s? Up till when we... Well, I'm, I'm going to go 90s because this was um, a CD I got in high school and it's one that's... I, I think anyone who's like really plugged into music will be like, yeah, we obviously had that, but like my friends weren't particularly plugged into music, especially rap <laughs> or hip hop. So when I got this CD, I was like the cool guy who blew them away. And then I actually got to see this band uh, or this group on their farewell tour, which was, um, they ended up coming back just a couple of years ago or whatever, because they all do, but it's a tribe called Quest um, and Q-Tip is my favorite. And not only did we get to, and Mark was with me, we got to see them open for the Beastie Boys, but they have a song from um, Ill Communication that they do with Q-Tip. So they started doing it on their own and then Q-Tip like rises through the floor and does it. So, um, and and the, the CD, it's like, I'm not going to say the title because it's like 30 words, but it's like people's instinctive path to rhyme and, and whatever. Um, but I, they were they were awesome and they were fun and uh, they had songs that were serious and socially conscious and then they also had songs that were just kind of goofy about That's him losing his wallet in El Segundo <laughs> or you know and he lost his Jimmy hats so what was he gonna do or the pubic enemy you know so they had they had a lot of great stuff like that so it was fun and um, you know for uh, you know like I was not the the white suburban kid who was like. I'm going to buy a White Sox hat and pretend I'm into gangster rap and like can identify with what they're talking about. Like I appreciate it for what it is, especially as I got older, but this was more kind of, I felt like my vibe of what I listened to. So I'm, I'm going to go with Q-Tip from a tribe called quest. Mark to make it close. Who you got? I'm going with the only man who could make both a Mariah Carey song and a prose song. Interesting. The one, the only ODB. <laughs> Can't believe you just made fun of Praz. Those are uh, both fine answers, but uh, they're wrong. It's Dr. Dre. So, yeah. um, by technicality, uh, Luke is the champion tonight. So I guess we'll go play your music. Boots and or cacao. Hey, what happened to my music? <laughs>